So it's Sunday and it's not really a very lazy Sunday because today I've decided I'm going to work on that rotary phone project again, try and get it nearly finished. Well, the last time we did it, I was looking at the CPT um, car power technology, 12 volt to 5 volt DC to DC converter. So with that in mind, if you recall on the last video where I tested this thing out, the um, the USB plug on it did not work. There was no power coming through it at all. And I ordered and had delivered these quite a while ago now, like replacement bits for a USB end. <laughs> what is it even called? Anyway, we're gonna build one of these today. Um, I started putting all this together again and thought, I remembered why I wasn't going to be plugging the five volts from this directly onto the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. And that is because there's no fuse if you do that. But if you uh, throw it onto the USB, then there is a fuse in line. So you don't have to worry about over current and over voltage spikes and things like that. So we're not gonna be going down the route of powering it directly via the GPIO. Um, because I don't know what this the state of this is on power on. I haven't scoped it out or anything. But I'm just so I'm just not going to risk it. And it's easy enough just to stick. Uh, well, I say easy enough. I haven't done this yet, but I'm hoping it's easy enough just to stick a new USB connector on. So let's give it a go. So it looks like this is all that's required for the USB. So you've got the I don't know any of the terms. The main connector, we've got a housing, we've got uh, some kind of a clip, I assume, and then that looks like it's like a cable strain relief type deal. Um, I assume it comes out the back of this. So you've got, ooh, so you've got this main housing with a channel running all the way down it. It's very difficult to see because it's black. And then at the end, we've got a round hole. So let's see if we can focus on that rather than where we are. Yeah, so oh, you can see down there, there's a, a channel with some grooves. And I think I should just be able to just drop this in. Hmm. I think I might have to use a bit of force to push that down. Yeah, I can just force that down there. Should I have put the cable in first? Maybe I should. I might want to take that back out again. Let's uh, get the cable inside, shall we? So this is the cable that we're going to be using. It's come straight off the CPT module. So I'm going to need to thread this. I need to just have a think about how that works. So this needs to go on first, I think. Don't take any of this as gospel because I don't really know what I'm doing. And then, um, then this one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that over the width of this cable. Let's see. Oh, it's a fairly tight fit. In fact, I don't actually think that's going to go anymore. No, that's it. So let's push this back up. Is it going to give us too much wire over here? It might well do. Okay, well, we'll see if this works. We can always cut a bit of cable off. So let's push that down the end. And then we solder this on, but we need to figure out what the pinout. You can't see that, can you? We need to figure out what the pinout is for this thing. Um, oh, I'll use one of these. Um, so we used these last time when we were messing about with this thing, but uh, we can use them to figure out what the pinout is. If you look on here, we've got two connections up here. Now, if I was a betting man, I'd say that's probably power and ground. And then on the other side, we've got three are there three? Or maybe there are two grounds. One's case ground, maybe, like the uh, connector ground. I don't know. Let's probe it out. So I've got a multimeter over here. And it's set to continuity mode. Oops. So hopefully you'll be able to hear this. And let's probe around. So let's try the top connections first. So oh, you guys can come in a little bit closer, can't you? So we've got plus over here. Now I would imagine it's probably one of these top ones. <laughs> it's neither of those. What about ground? 
neither. That's also not ground. Okay, so plus that side, so it's going to go that side. So we're looking for the positive signal. Oops. Okay, so that's the far side there. How about ground? Okay, so that's ground. Okay. Is it? Let's just double check. Yeah, negative to the top side over there. So let's just mark that so we don't forget. Okay, so I've just put a bit of a black mark there. I don't know how long that's going to stay there, but that will tell me it's ground. Which one was positive? It was the far side, wasn't it? Yeah, very far side. I don't have a red marker here. Not around, but we'll just have to remember that the middle one's not used. So we need to solder our cable to that. Now, how does this then fit in here? Does it recess quite a lot? Because I don't really have a lot of cable there, so maybe I should shorten this down. So it's really short, like there, maybe. Let's push it in all the way and see how far it goes. Yeah, I think we can just solder straight to it. Let's do that. We'll shorten these wires. So let's tin up this connector. And we'll pop these wires on. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to be able to do that. Uh, I wish I do have something, don't I? We can try this out. Well, this Bruntec um, stand doesn't see much use in general videos because the camera is now like <laughs> very, very close. But uh, it will be worthwhile for this because it will hold it still. He says, okay, we'll just go with it. If I can hold my hands still at the same time, that'd be wonderful. All right, let's check that out. That was just uh, a little bit difficult. Well, I can't argue with it there being on. That's, that's fine. Shall we power this thing up and test it before we put it together? I think we probably should. Right, I've just turned on my power supply and we've got 12 volts coming into the CPPT unit. See, whatever it is, I can't remember now. It's definitely not CPPT. And I've got some probes here, so let's figure out what our voltage is. So we've got positive at the top, let's hold that down, and then negative at the bottom, and we are reading five volts. So successfully connected. So let's do the rest of it, shall we? Turn that off. Now we bring this up. Slide it back in. I mean, I'm very unsure. Well, that feels secure. Take that off. And then we'll use one of these to clip it in, I think. Doesn't quite like it. I'll let you come a bit closer so you can see the real hash job I'm making of this. Oh, sorry, multimeter. Oh, it's upside down. Maybe that makes a difference. No, why is it like that? <laughs>
Well, that is annoying. So you get this bit here, which is meant to go over that. You see, it's got like a sort of a reverse of this. So that slots over here. Maybe that helps it guide in. Let's test that assumption. Oh yeah, there we go, almost. Just gotta force it in a bit. I can't do it, I need a screwdriver or something. There we go. There we are, now that should be good enough to power a Raspberry Pi. Shall we see if it is? I don't think it's really gonna do anything. I'm not sure what it's set up to do at the moment, but it may light this up, who knows? So let's um, turn the power supply back on. On with the volts. Let's go. Well, it's certainly powering it. Oh, I forgot to sort of focus for you there. It's certainly powering it, and you can see this is on. In fact, I'll make it a bit more obvious. So you can see that it's on, which is great. The network's connecting. Okay, I think we're good to go really with that. Ace, that is a success. I'll put a link to the description in the description of where you can pick up these do-it-yourself cable bits and bobs, because that, actually it's pretty simple. Um, just as long as you have one of these around so that you can test uh, what the polarity is and what, which pin goes to which thingy. All right, well, this means I can continue with this this week and try and finish it, because that would be nice, wouldn't it? All right, I'll speak to you all soon.